Hello, fellow leggers. It's great to see you. Thanks for coming along. Yes, you are joining us here in the heart of London's West End at the Donmar Warehouse. To see the prime of Miss Jean Brodie. So stay tuned to find out how many legs. Whether it's break a leg or, or leg it. Hello fellow leggers, it's nice that you are back with us. Now please remember before you go on. Yes, if you are there, give us a like down below. It's nice to know that we're not just talking to each other. Also, if you want to join our Lego Theatre community, then have a chat in the comments just below. Let us know your thoughts, your feelings on this piece. Yes. Anything else you're excited about coming up over the next few months. And now, while we're on that, a way you can do that, we're going to have a Q&A session at some point in the future. Many of you leggers have asked us questions and so we want to try and compile them together so if there's anything yeah. you want to ask us directly about us or about the theatre that we love anything favourites least favourites that we're gonna get them all together and we're gonna yeah. reply directly to you so let us know okay so um, let's go on to this one Prime Miss Jean Brody yes what do we know about this it's a brand new adaptation of the novel from 1961 by Muriel Spark this adaptation by David Harrower it was previously adapted into a movie in 1969 starring the now dame Maggie Smith. Have you seen it? Never seen it. Never, Never seen read it either. the book. Um, but it's set okay. in a Scottish all-girls school. It's the tale of teacher Jean Brodie, whose daring educational methods encourage her students to embrace romantic ideals such as love and art rather than the traditional three R's, much to the anger of the school's headmistress. Bit of a renegade. Okay, so it sounds a bit like Dead Poet Society or kind yeah, of like... To serve with love, that sort of, you know, teacher being okay. inspirational. Okay. In the title role is the magnificent Leah Williams. We love Leah Williams. Yes. We saw her in Aristea. Yes, Mary Stewart. Mary Stewart. She's amazing. also been on screen in series such as Doc Martin, Netflix's The Crown, and the Channel 4 show Kiri, which was written by Jack Thorne, who also wrote Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. He did. Um, also in this cast is someone who's also worked with uh, Leah Williams before on Aristea. Yes. And he is Angus Wright. Angus Wright's credit include Hamlet, which was at the Almeida. We saw him in that at the yeah. Harold Pinter and then it was broadcast on BBC Two. He did 1984 when it went to the Playhouse here in London and on the big screen he is in the film Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. Okay, anything else we need to know? Well, Polly, 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 Polly Findlay is directing this. She also directed Beginning that we saw at the beginning of the year. Really strong piece. Such a feat to direct such a small cast and that was great. This show is 2 hours and 25 minutes including an interval which is where we're going to catch you for our 30 second interval breakdown. And stick around to the end so you can find out how many legs have come to the interval which means it's time for the breaker leggers 30, 30 second, second interval, interval breakdown, breakdown. Go. Oh, what do you think so far i'm going first um i think it's really well performed leah williams is a fantastic actress she's taken on a real character for this and um, which is really nice to watch wasn't was a bit worried about accents but actually i think the accent's fantastic it's a nice nice it's nice yeah and i think that's the main thing it's nice there's no great drama there's no real drive but in terms of a character performance it's really enjoyable it's subtle yet it has elements of beauty and We've come to the end of the prime of Miss Jean Brodie, so was it a woman in her prime, was it a play in its prime, or was it a, a play sort of petering out at the end and flaking away, what do you think? Uh, what I honestly think, and I'm probably going to shake up the order of how we do this, mm. but there's certain elements that are so strong and make the piece, right, and I, I guess for this production, what made it for me, and I'm sorry if I'm jumping ahead, is Leah Williams. Yeah. Leah Williams is fantastic. I know we've seen her before and we've often said, I think it was you that said actually, that she is like one of the best actresses out there. This thoroughly cemented it for me, even though I knew it already. This just added some more concrete on top of that. Yeah. She is phenomenal and to be given the opportunity, opportunity to be in such an intimate space with someone who is so on top of and her And a master craft. Of, her, of her skill and her, a you know, her life is a good blood. Word. She, yeah. she, she lives, breathes and just... She, she, this is yeah. what she is meant to do. Yes. Like she's in the right 
right, right career. Like she couldn't do anything else. This is it. Yeah. She embodies a character. I was, my eyes were drawn to her throughout. And I mean, I'm speaking like, on other people's behalf here, but I'd imagine that those young actresses in the cast alongside her are getting an opportunity and getting a, a masterclass almost that they would never get in, in, a, in a kind of classical environment, in a training environment, just yeah. to share a stage with her. You know, I'm sorry if I'm speaking out of turn here, but I imagine that they are counting their blessings and they feel very lucky because well, we feel lucky sharing a room with her. I was going to say, I feel very lucky just to have seen her perform because yeah. I think it's brilliant so uh, that's the main highlight for me I'll yes. go with that to start with over to you for your main highlight I would say with regards to the piece it's very subtle and it's so subtle at times as to become somewhat invisible um, I got a sense of resolution by the end and sort of understood the character and how it is written of Jean Brody and also her sort of motives and her motivation but, as I said, just it's, it's not a really compelling journey. It's just something that is underplayed and very bubbling below the surface and not a great driver. Um, and it, as a result, I found myself just drifting at times. Uh, you know, I wasn't really hooked into the storyline, but what I was hooked into was some of the performances. Which is interesting, because um, I think that the, it is a, quite a deep, layered story. I think there is layers in there, um, definitely, and some really intelligent themes in its writing. But I, I think you hit, hit the nail on its head. It just doesn't drive through. And there are some real fantastic, driven pieces that then just elevate everything and the whole thing together along with the acting and everything is fantastic the performances were almost stronger than the drive yes and as a result i wasn't drifting off at times but it just it lacked and I, I can't even say it lacked pace because it wasn't in the performances because the performances were really strong but just in its writing it was just um a little bit wet yeah it's hard to describe hard i want to, to say describe. meh Oh. But a bit meh, a bit beige, a bit... Yeah, a little bit. Even though it's layered as well, it's, it's a bit of a tricky it one. It is a tricky one. It's, it's, it's very contradictory here. Yeah. You know, it's it's layered, yet the layers aren't particularly interesting on their own. And they, is so it they that don't stack it's up It's written, it. so it's not it's not as interesting as it could be perhaps. perhaps but then what do you do with that you know if you've got a, a duff story to begin with you there's give it not to a, a bloody you good actress but you do what you do and you let her actress. drive it because the part of Miss Jean Brodie is one of those parts I think that it's almost like a female Hamlet mm. it's the one that if you're a fantastic actress I imagine you want to play you jump that role. The chance yeah because it is so um, just such a meaty part mm. I, I think Leah probably relishes playing that role yes well we talked enough about Leah was there anyone else in the cast were well, there others <laughs> okay, apparently well, there were there were oh, well, do you tell me about someone um, so Scott, Angus Wright again another yes. great actor that we've enjoyed hugely in other roles um, again going to show that he can turn his hand to anything very He's, versatile he plays a very I, I've not seen him in such a vulnerable role before I'd say a great work yeah there is a vulnerability about the character that he plays in this but I've not seen him he's always been the commanding one in things that we've seen before mm. but in this he gets to play sensitive and almost a little bit uh, of a kind of a, a slight comic relief in his sort of doofusness as, you he, know, was, he was a bit of a he is a little bit of a and sort he played of, that really geek. well uh, very subtle yeah, and, and it, just right just right with a little touch of humour and it was nice to see him do something a bit different he's very capable also mention Helena Wilson in the role of Jenny um, thought that she she sort of she comes into her own in the second act because she goes from shy wallflower to sort of a little bit sexy and um, because she, she wants to she's pursuing her life as an actress oh yeah she did have a good journey so she has a great difference between the two acts and I kind enjoyed of, yeah, that yeah finding that sexuality side of her yeah. sexual side of her and a confidence that she has she, to be honest she has more yeah. belief in herself than is actually probably warranted as a character but you know what she's invested in herself and that was interesting and I know you were a fan of Rona Morrison in the role of Sandy yeah the driving character I guess she's, she's kind of the lead the next lead outside of Leah um, mm. the, and she played that really well again 
a nice transition because they're playing from very young, about the age of 11, to then later on in life. So nice journeys in terms of how they develop and become more confident and start to challenge and question what they were led to believe from their younger selves. And someone else that goes on a journey is the character Joyce Emily, played by Nicola Coughlin. Coughlin? You liked Ooh. her. I liked her a lot. I mean, she goes from very vulnerable, naive youth with a sense of nervousness and a very sort of, um, like I say, vulnerable, childlike um, character to a, a confident out there, I've got to make something of my existence in the second act, which ultimately leads to her fate. But um, I, I liked that, I thought she was well played. Her emotional yeah. differences were great. Yeah, it's a really nice storyline she has actually, kind of touching on how impressionable young people are and how Jane Brodie then influences that to her own Again, sound design, we had lovely use of bells throughout, which played their own tunes, actually live bells hanging from the were ceiling. They, the yeah, no, they were chiming, I was checking. They were, were it wasn't they? recorded. I wasn't sure if it, no. at one point I did think, is this the bells no, playing? Because it does it sound is. like them, yeah. or is it just a very clever sound design? Because no. we're quite close to speakers. I, was, I, could, oh, see the, I nice. could see the actual mechanism that was making them. Okay. And do you know what? It's Paul Arditi. Paul Arditi, Again, who we who's the are best Harold. in the business. Um, and it was a very yeah. good, even without the bells, it's a very nice soundscape at certain moments. I love those lovely bassy sounds, those mm -hmm. sort of, Dong. to emphasise moments like that. You love I, a dog. I love that. Um, set, what did you think of the set? Uh, I thought the set was simple, not simple understated. Was what they've it changed, me. they've actually taken out the first two rows of the Dom and replaced them with school wooden seats just to add a sense of immersiveness through into the audience, which I thought was an interesting touch. Imagine that was a Interesting, I wouldn't decision. like to sit on them. No, they didn't look terribly I had a nice comfortable seat. But I wouldn't want a wooden seat. <laughs> but I guess it's an interesting creative idea. Yeah, designer Lizzie Clack. Clacken. Gosh, I'm terrible with these pronunciations today. And should we mention the director? Absolutely. I think um, the director... Polly Finlay. I, I don't... Obviously, Leah is fantastic, mm. but to bring out, bring out such complexities of the character and characters can only be done from a real intellectual understanding and translation into physicality and delivery of lines from a really good director. So, um, really good work there. And I guess that's also a parallel to, um, is it Beginnings? Yeah, Beginning. We, beginning we saw, you know, was also very intellectually um, directed. So, some really nice stuff there from the director. A very quickly mentioned dialect coach, Neil Lynn. I imagine you had your work out on this one because not all of the cast were Scottish, but they pulled that off really, really well. Really good accents, and also actually. Susanna Peretes, uh, wigs, hair and makeup. Leah's wig was fabulous. Okay, so I guess you're probably wondering how many legs we are going to give the prime of Miss Jean Brody. That's the one at the Don Mar Warehouse. We are going to give three. A solid three. A solid three. The actual, the actresses and the performance here are unfortunately greater than the story that is being told. It's a good story, but just lacks pace. Yeah, lacks and, and drive. I would say that it's worth coming if you get the opportunity to see a cast like this, and especially Leah. I know we keep banging on about him, sorry, darling. Yeah. But um, do so because you are going to get. You are going to. It's going to be memorable. It's actually going to be unforgettable. It's a masterclass. Like if you're studying acting, if you're studying drama like mm. this is just to see how she translates and how she inhabits character yeah. and just what's going on inside and yep. masterclass bearing her soul and it's great to see but that's, that's just, just what, what we, we thought <laughs> just what we thought what did you think have you seen this in anything else with leah williams or any of the other cast let us know down below we'd love to hear from you we are the breaker leggers and we'll catch you again soon bye, bye.